Hi, I'm Jennifer, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this acorn softy. It's an easy crochet pattern that uses simple stitches and a small amount of yarn. If you like this project, don't forget to click to subscribe, and you can find more details about the pattern and the supplies in the description below. The pattern is a free pattern at my blog, CelticKnotCrochet.com. Let's get started. So in order to make this acorn softy, you'll need these supplies to make it in the same color that I have. I used medium weight Red Heart Super Saver yarn in the color oatmeal, you can see right here. So a light tan. And then I used a small amount of this Yarn B Fur yarn that I found at Hobby Lobby called Fur the Moment in the color mink. They have a bunch of different colors, uh, but I thought this one worked best. And if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, you want to get a fur yarn that looks like this, that has a, a thin base to it with the fur popping out, or kind of, if you were to cut it, it would kind of look like an eyelash. See that? So that's the kind of yarn I used, and that gives this kind of haphazard furry look, like an animal. Um, you'll also need a size H, five millimeter crochet hook. You'll need some polyfill stuffing. You'll need a tapestry needle some sharp scissors, some stitch markers, total of six, and you'll want some safety eyes. These here are size eight millimeter. And optional is a small rectangle of tan felt. I'll show you what we'll use that for. And you'll need a small amount of black crochet thread and an embroidery needle like this. This is to do the mouth, so it's a very, very small amount of size three cotton crochet thread. But you could use embroidery floss as well. Let's go over how to put this together. So we're going to start with the oatmeal yarn and work from here down, working in the round. Then we'll fasten off, seal up the bottom, and then we'll start with the fur yarn and work around the top. Close that up and then add this little stem for the acorn cap. And before, of course, we close everything up, we're going to add the eyes and the mouth. To begin our acorn softy, we're going to put our slip knot on the hook and then chain 24. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the very first chain around to my last chain and I'm going to single crochet into that first chain. And then I'm going to continue working a single crochet in each chain around and now I've just created the pocket or the tube that's going to make the body of the acorn softy. So single crochet, remember you put your hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And I'll work that all the way around until I'm finished with this chain. Here you can see I've worked all the way around with the single crochet in each chain. And here is my first stitch of the round. And I'm going to not join with the slip stitch. I'm just going to continue working in single crochets around and around in a spiral. But so I can keep track of where the first stitch is, I'm going to mark that first stitch after I make it with a stitch marker. And now I can find the beginning of each round and I'll just move it up to the first stitch of each new round. And I'm going to work seven more rounds of single crochet going through both loops like so. 
So I have a total of eight rounds of the simple single crochet stitch. And you can count them easily. One, two. So continue that and I'll be back when we have those eight rounds completed. Here you can see I've completed the eight rounds of single crochet. We can count them right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I just kept moving my stitch marker up and marking the first round, uh, first stitch, sorry, of each round as I went. Now at this point you want to make sure that that first stitch is in the center of your tube, like so. And this will be the back side of the acorn body. So make sure you have it in the center like so. And now we're going to work on round nine. And this is where we're going to start doing some decreases to create the slight shaping here at the bottom. So I remove my stitch marker and I'm going to work five single crochets, one in each of the next five. But after I mark my first one, I want to put that stitch marker back in there to keep my place. So two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to do a single crochet, two together. Now there is one way you can do this that works really well for the amigurumi style crochet projects, the little plushies and softies. And it's called a hidden decrease or hidden single crochet decrease. So I'll show you how to do it. We're basically going to take these two stitches and make them into one. So I'm going to insert my hook through the front loop of the next stitch and then through the front loop of the stitch after that and then I'll complete my single crochet as usual. Yarn over, pull through the stitches, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. And that makes just a much cleaner decrease and reduces the size of the hole that you sometimes get when you do a single crochet decrease. So that single crochet two together and then I'm going to single crochet in the next ten stitches. And now I'm going to do that hidden single crochet decrease again, or single crochet two together. Put my hook through the front loop of one stitch, front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitches, yarn over, pull through two. And now I should have five stitches left here, and I'm going to work single crochet in the last five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. So that completes round nine. You can see by doing those decreases our shape is starting to curve in a little bit here. Now we're going to do another round with similar shaping where we just do the decreases right here on these two edges. So I'm going to work four single crochets do my first one, mark it with the stitch marker, and then two, three, four. Now I'm going to do the hidden decrease or single crochet two together right here. Hook through the front, through the front, yarn over, pull through both, yarn over, pull through two. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next 10 stitches again across the front of the body. 9 and 10. And then I'm going to do the decrease again right here. Hook in, hook in through the front loops, yarn over, pull through 2, yarn over, pull through 2, and then single crochet in the last 4 stitches here. 1, 2, 3, Four. And I want to keep that center mark stitch in the center of the back of the body. And we have this nice shape starting to form. So we can fasten off.
And now we're going to work the few little stitches that make this point of the bottom of the acorn. I'm going to eyeball this here and mark the center three stitches. And again, it won't be perfect because there's 10 on either side. Um, but just, you could see right here, one, two, three. These look like a good center. One, two, three. So that's the center three on the front side. And now I just want to pick three that line up right here. One, two, three on the back side. And this way I have everything lined up so the point is nice and even in the center of our acorn body. And this helps us keep track of where everything is. So we'll use this side for demonstration right now. And I'm going to work into these three stitches that I marked, but one to the right and one to the left. So I'm going to be working in five stitches. I'm going to slip stitch in this first one, then single crochet in each of these, and then slip stitch in the last one. And then fasten off, and then I'm going to add one more row here. So I'm going to put my slip knot on my hook, find that stitch to the right of the first marked one, and do a slip stitch, which is yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the loop on my hook. Then I'm going to work single crochet in the next stitch, and the stitch after that. and the stitch after that. And then I'm going to work a slip stitch in that last indicated stitch right there. Slip stitch, cut the yarn tail, and knot it off. Now I have three single crochets right here. One, two, three. So this is the slip stitch and the slip stitch, and I have one, two, three single crochets right in the middle. So I'm going to put my slip knot on my hook again, and I'm going to work a single crochet, two together, in each of these stitches. I'm going to single crochet the first two together, and then I'm going to single crochet the second two together. So I'll put my hook through yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to put my hook into the back loop only for the second one. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Now I'm going to do the same thing but over these two stitches here, the center one and the third one. But this time I'm going to put my hook under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And then I cut that and knot it off. So this adds this little section here. And don't worry, there are a lot of yarn tails, but we're going to tuck those all inside the acorn body, and you do not have to weave those all in. So now I'm going to repeat that same process on this side, doing the slip stitch, three single crochet slip stitch, and then the single crochet two together on top, and then we're going to sew up the bottom. Here I've completed both little add-ons on both sides and now I'm going to turn the body section right side in, or wrong side out, however you look at it, and pull all those yarn tails out. So it looks a little messy now but don't worry. And I want to make sure that 
these two center sections I added are lined up and I'm going to take one of the yarn tails, doesn't matter which one, just make sure they're long enough, at least one's long enough to use to sew up and we're going to sew along this edge right here just using a simple whip stitch put my needle through and go over the seam and through both sides like so right along the edge along the edge of that little add-on section we made and that will create the little point at the bottom of the acorn body lots of yarn tails here but we'll work around those because we don't want to cut those too short because our project might unravel and if I run out of length on this yarn tail I would just tie it off with one of the other ones and use another yarn tail to finish it up so I've come to the end I'm gonna tie a nice tight double knot here so it doesn't come undone and I sewed across here now I turn it right side out and there we have it and this is the front actually nope this is the front of the acorn body and all these yarn tails we're gonna stuff inside and I'll help with some of the stuffing push them down to the bottom push them into that point so the point holds its shape nicely easy so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the face details the eyes and the mouth because it's much easier to do that with this opening uh, before we add the cap adding safety eyes like these to crochet projects has become very popular lately but I've discovered that sometimes they're not as secure as you would like even though they're called safety eyes and you put this anchor on the back on that stem and it's supposed to lock the eye in place but I've discovered that sometimes because the yarn is loose or the stitches are big uh, these eyes can pop out and of course then it's not safety and it's not safe for little kids and we don't want them choking on them so when all else fails do not leave a young child alone with any project that has safety eyes uh, just to be safe but here is a way that I've come up with to make them a little more secure so you have your crocheted project and you insert the eyes where you would like them so what I discovered is that if you take a piece of fabric and I found that felt or fleece works really well or you can use um, even two layers of cotton fabric that you've sewn together so they're nice and sturdy and they won't fray and disintegrate inside the stuffy uh, I'm using felt for this project because I don't anticipate washing it very often felt will hold up under some washings but if it's something that you're gonna wash regularly then I would use maybe fleece because you don't have to uh, secure the edges or like I said make a cotton square and sew around the edges and I just want to make sure that this is going to extend past the eyes and I'm going to kinda no pun intended here eyeball it haha -ha, and put a small hole with my sharp scissors into the felt and I'm gonna take that small hole and put it over one of the stems of the eyes like that 
and then I'm going to feel around and I want to make sure that I put the next hole in the right place. So I do one hole at a time like this. And press it through there. The smaller the hole the better because the tighter it will be on your eye stem. And so now I have the eyes going through this fabric. So this just adds another layer of anchor. I just want to make sure my eyes aren't pulling or doing something weird on the front. And now, as you usually do with a safety eye, I'm going to put the anchor on it like that. And I like to put them on um, gently, not push them as hard as I can because I want to see what it looks like. Sometimes if you squeeze them too hard, it actually makes the eyes dig into your crocheted fabric and looks kind of funny. So, and then you can check them that you can't, they, they're not slipping off. I try to pull them off and I can't. And because I made it in tan, you can't see it through my stitches. And I have a nice anchor here for my safety eyes. So I recommend trying this technique for a variety of your crochet softy and plushy projects. And that way your eyes will be more secure and you can be rest assured that they'll be much safer for any child that you give it to. So for the mouth, this is what I like to do to make a really simple, quick mouth like you see here. For a long time I struggled with how to make the mouth nice and even. So this is what I came up with. I put the size 3 black thread on my long embroidery needle and I'm going to put my hook, I mean my needle up, try to put it through a stitch because that'll grab onto the thread the best. And then I'm going to go back down where I want the mouth to end. So this is the top side of the smile and then the left side of the smile. Pull it through like that. Give myself a little bit more yarn here. So I want to make sure that this is pulled out and I push it down and see, okay, that's the size of the smile I like. So it's not pulled all the way taut to the crochet fabric. And then I'm going to put my hook, uh, sorry, I keep saying hook, put my needle up through where I'd like the bottom of the smile to be. And I go over the thread like so. And that anchors that piece of thread into a nice little mouth shape. And that's all there is to it. And then on the inside, I take the two yarn tails and I tie them in a double knot so I know that it's not going to come loose. Make sure it didn't distort the smile at all. And then I just cut those, not too short, and tuck them in. Now we're ready to work the top half of the acorn. If you want, you can start stuffing it, but I found that when the fiber fill was inside the project while I was crocheting, it would get stuck all to the front and in different areas that I didn't want the stuffing. So I'm going to wait to add the stuffing. I'm taking my fur yarn and putting a slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to start in the back area where I started working my other side of this project. 
Now a few tips about working with this fur yarn. It can be hard to see your stitches, so if you'd like, you can work with another yarn, even like a thin um, crochet thread along with it, and if you see, it kind of just disappears. But you work as if you're only working with this thread, and your brain kind of just ignores the fur, and you just focus on this, and you're able to see your stitches a lot easier. Another thing I like to do is I like to feel my stitches, and I like to count them out loud. So I'm just going to put my hook into here and do a join with single crochet. So I insert my hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And I'm going to do that around the top, do single crochets around the whole top. And right now I have the tan yarn showing me where to go. So I know that I'm going to have um, the 24 stitches, but what I want to do to make it a little bit bigger is I'm going to add two stitches somewhere in this round. So I just added one there and I'm going to work across the front. Now I'll tell you a little secret for those of you who like everything exact when you work with fur yarn, things aren't going to be exact. Dun dun dun! So, it's okay if you don't have exactly the stitches I do. As long as your cute little acorn has a cap that looks like this, you'll be fine. So again, like I said, I like to count my stitches, so it's very hard here to see my stitches without another yarn paired up with it. I can feel them as I run my thumb and middle finger across these stitches. I can feel where each stitch is. So I'm going to use that technique to help me work all the way around. And I'm just going to do a single crochet in each one around. Now I know there are 26. So I'm just going to go till I've done 26. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, so I should be at around 13 at around the center front because that's about halfway. And then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so I don't have a lot left, so maybe I'll put another one here. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, okay, so close enough, okay? So I did 25, and I wanted around 26, so again, no biggie, and it still looks really cute. So now we're going to do some two more rounds and we're going to decrease so we can get it to come up this way. So I'm going to do like I did in the rounds down here. I'm going to work five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five and that should bring me about to the side and then I'm going to do two single crochets together so I'll show you again put my hook in yarn over pull up a loop put my hook into the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop there are three loops on my hook here one two three yarn over pull through all three then I'm going to work let's see I think 
10 single crochets across the front. Yeah, I got in about eight. So I just want to go to the side and then I'm going to do single crochet two together again. And then I want to do, I don't know, it's four or five back to where I started in the center back. So this is three, four. I can fit one more in five. And it should be getting smaller. See how it's getting smaller. And now for my last round, I'm going to do single crochet two together all the way around. And again, I'm eyeballing it. Hook in, hook in, three loops on my hook. And this will make it close up really nice and finish off that cute rounded top. So you might fit in 11 of these, you might do nine. It's really not a big deal. I'm just feeling the next stitches as I go. I can feel one here, yarn over, pull up a loop, feel one next to it, hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop. And I'm back at the center of the back. And there we go. And I have that nice, cute, rounded cap. And I'm going to cut my fur yarn so I have some length to work with. Yarn over, pull through. And I'm going to use this yarn tail and my tapestry needle to sew up the top. But first, I'm going to add the stuffing. So, just take the stuffing like this, push it down inside, and you can mold the shape a little bit with your hands to move the stuffing where you like it. Almost finished. And here you see that opening and just like I did on the bottom but this one I can do outside because the fur covers lots of mistakes it's nice like that you're not going to be able to see the stitching at all go through one side out the other and close up that top And sometimes too with the fur yarn, I um, some of it gets caught in the stitches, so I pull some of those fibers out of the stitches so they look more furry like this. And I'll cut that yarn tail. And the last thing is we're going to add this cute little stem to the top. And for that, we'll need the oatmeal yarn again. Put my slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to chain five. And then I'm going to work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And single crochet in each of the next three chains. So I have a total of four single crochets, chain one, turn it around, and work single crochet back in each of the next four stitches, and then cut with a nice tail that I can use to sew it on top. And what I like to do is take my yarn needle here and weave this yarn tail through the stem and then I'm just going to sew it right to the top. This one I think I sewed so it was a little bit curved a little bit to the right. You could do that if you like. 
and I sew it on just like you would any other crocheted piece. Just go right through, make sure you go through the thickness of the felt, uh, the fur, and go in and out, in and out, until it's nice and secure. And there you have it, the Crochet Acorn Softy. I hope you enjoyed making this project. I think these would be a lot of fun to add to a Thanksgiving garland or a Thanksgiving wreath, or even to put them on your Thanksgiving table as cute little decorations, or you could even pin a, a place card or a name right there, and everyone knows where to sit for Thanksgiving, but then they can also take this home as a remembrance of their time with you. So don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and if you like to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.